I got to give a lot of coaches a lot of credit. Howard Mudd, way back in 1982, he taught me the drop step, uh, he taught me how to jump, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I work for the Bengals, so I've got the ability to use this iPad. So I do a lot of my own. Uh, I got my own iPad that I copied a lot of stuff from, but this is the present one that they give me. So everything I'm going to show you is generally from somebody else that I saw something that was interesting or something good. So uh, I'm going to move on here real quick. All right, this is McNally's Spring Project. Okay, here I'm going to go to something real quick here, fellas. I'm going to go to... Uh, First thing, uh, I'm going to go to a gap entry uh, runs. All right, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys here. All right, now, all I want you to look at is the backside tackle. See this guy? Has somebody got a pointer? Uh, uh, what the fuck? Do we have a pointer here? Okay, I guess we don't. All right, the the right tackle. All right, for all you guys that are zone blocking, okay. Hit laser. Okay, hit, hit laser. No. no, forget it. Don't worry about. It. For for all you guys that are zone blocking, and I'll cover it later. We'll demonstrate or whatever. In my opinion, all right. And this is another team doing it. The guy that's the second guy in the scheme, like the right tackle. Okay. No, is that that screwed me up? He should get behind the guy. So, you know, if some of you guys like take a drop step or whatever step you take and you try to fit in, it's much better to get behind the guy. You gotta lose some ground. I think that this 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 tackle here, he might want to lose two steps, you know, lose a step with his left foot, then lose a step with his right foot, but get behind the guy. I'm gonna try to isolate all right, you, you kind of see what I'm talking about. This is like an inside zone. Now my diet point is there is no there is there's no crease between these two guys that they can split. Plus, when he gets depth, if this guy pinches, are you with me? He pinches, he can what you call rewind and come back and block the guy. The other thing I'm going to mention that I'll see some shots later, for all you guys that when you do a backside zone block on a run, you know, and these this guy's going here and up to there, I would encourage you guys to take a good look at not using the shoulder rip and not using the rip. The only reason I say that, when you rip the shoulder in, the three technique flattens you out because you're mired into the guy. You give nothing for your buddy to fit into. The other thing I would encourage, believe it or not, as crazy as it sounds, is this guy's working to go to second level, lose some ground lose some ground. The reason I say that, when you lose some ground and your feet are on the ground, your feet are on the ground and he hits you, he does not splash you. These are John Strollo's words, who's the smartest guy I know. He's the line coach at Ball State. He's my mentor and he's younger than me. I coached him in college. But anyway, uh, do I have to walk around with this thing here? Uh, Bottom line is, you see this guard here, and I'll, and I'll show you some clips later. Th this guard working with this guy, let's say it's an inside zone. Instead of like taking a drop step or whatever and going like this to hit the guy, this guy on defense is going to flatten you out. He's going to take you to the hole. So what you really need to do, if I'm the right guard, I'll do it kind of quickly, is, and I'll go, bah, bah. so watch it, bah, bah, bah. I, I'm still going to go forward, but I've lost a little ground, so when the guy hits me, my feet are on the ground. If I go bang, bang, I've got one foot ahead of the other, one foot of the head of the other, he hits me, he splashes me like you're in the swimming pool, boom, another word but John invented, it's whatever. So the backside guard, so he doesn't get mired in on that three technique, he should get away from him a little bit and use his hands. And then when the guy hits him like that, he can just take his hands and throw him front side and the ball will cut behind you. It's kind of confusing, but what I'm saying is everybody's teaching the backside guard to shoulder pry, flipper, lift, and the guy's naked, knocking you into the damn play, and you'll see the backside guards get flattened out all the time. But anyway, I'm talking about an overlap technique by the next guy coming, all right? Something to think about, and I'm going to go to something else here. All right, here we go. Now, Scotty's going to talk about this one here. This is angle A, pass blocking, all right? Watch the left tackle. This is Howard Mudd, okay? Uh, okay, i got to make sure I'm on the right one here. All right, watch the left tackle, all right? See that flat set? I call that angle A. I'm going to freeze it right there. All right, so my point is, all right, here's the thing. 
You want to take the guy on short. He's out there wide. So the guy that could use this is a left tackle versus a wide guy, a right tackle, or a guard if he's got a fan out on a 3-4. All right, here's the key. Because you're going so flat to jump him, in Howard's words, where do you think you're vulnerable? You're so flat, inside or outside? Inside. The reason I say that, if that guy is so flat like that, and the, I don't have separation to recover, so when I've got a flat set, there's a big lane for, so don't go as far. Only get a quarter of them. When you're out here at the guy, you don't have to get your inside eye to his inside eye, foot to crotch, whatever all that shit is. All I'm saying, when I come out here, boom, you see what I'm talking about? I only have to get a quarter of them, which means I've protected the inside, but because I'm so, I will get him before he takes two steps. Trust me. If I wasn't worried about a TE, I'd do that every time. Now, if you've got a big, slow tackle, he's got slow feet, nothing's going to work. If you've got a halfway decent athlete, angle A, so I take the angles, the flatter angle is A, a little deeper angle, 45, blah, 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 okay? So the point I'm making, fellas, is this is, Scotty's going to talk about this in a little bit, but I'm just, is there any questions about the angle of the left tackle, short setting a guy? Now, he didn't necessarily drop, step, and run out there. He went sideways. I mean, he's going laterally, and he uses the left, bang, all right? And I don't give a shit what the guy on defense does. You've rerouted him. All right, we're good on that one? All right. Yes. No, you don't wait for shit. You, you go out there and you, you get your hand on him as soon as you can. You're not out here. No. Boom, boom, boom. Why, why do you have to commit to him? You go out there. Because as soon as you get your Hand. You want to get your hands on him before he gets your hands on you. You're not waiting. Boom! Yeah, but he's not going to. If I sit, he, I'm still going to deliver blow. You're not going to deliver blow if you're not ready with a, almost a three-quarter lockout. I'll let Tony get your hands on him right now. You're going to disrupt him if you wait on him. If you wait on him, uh, and what I'm saying is, I, I would get on him. Do just like this guy. He's one of the best left tackles in football. I just know what I see that he does over and over. Okay. Again. Again, this isn't my stuff. This is stuff I'm seeing they're doing. All right, here we go. Let's go with the Bengals double team. All right. You won't believe this, fellas. Paul did a great job, right? Now, Bob, I, gotta, I want Scotty to get an hour, okay? But I got a lot of good shit here, all right? See this right guard here? This is J.J. Watt. People were double teaming him and he was splitting the double team, splitting the double team. So uh, I, I talked to Paul, Paul said, I think this is what I'm going to do. This is Strollo's stuff from Ball State, the smartest guy I know. I coached him at BC, he's my mentor, he's 10 years younger than me. The bottom line is, this guy's going to deliver force without momentum. Force without momentum. This is momentum. <sighs> All right. Watch his feet. When you watch his feet, his feet don't go anywhere. Nowhere. Just in place. But his hands are in front of him. His feet are behind him. His hands are in front of him. His feet. You are strongest when your feet are behind you. You are strongest when my, when my feet are either underneath me or behind me. That's where I'm strongest. You're never strongest with your foots in front of yourself, okay? So his feet are underneath him or behind him. His hands are in front of him. He's got a big chest. Now, obviously, he's got a big 350-pound tackle that's double teaming with him, but watch what the right guard does. He's, he's using force without momentum. Watch his feet. Where's his feet going? Nowhere. They're not going anywhere. His upper body's going forward. He's got his hands in front of him. Okay? And he moved him. All right. Let's go to the Redskins here. Okay. This is all I do is football. Here, I got all this shit here. I, I got to just make sure where I, where I find this stuff here. All right. Redskins critical points. All right. Now, 
Let's look at uh, O2, the left guard, all right? All right. Now, obviously, you guys all know this, right? Look at the left guard, all right? The center's either going to the right or he, the left guard has no help, all right? So bottom line is, watch where he gets beat. Bang. Watch how slow his right hand is, all right? If you guys can visualize whatever his right hand is doing, you know, he didn't set inside, he didn't do, but that's where you're vulnerable to the inside. Scotty's going to talk a little bit about, you know, whatever, and then, you know, I, uh, Paul would, would, uh, would, would set inside and club that thing, but fellas, you cannot get beat inside. Obviously, there's an example of it, and, and we'll, Scott will show you some things in a minute, all right? All right, now watch the right guard here. I think this kid's area is Larry. Here's Howard Mudd right here, fellas. This is what, you could do this every time. He's jumping the guy, but what do you notice about his feet? How fast are they going? 100 miles an hour, all right? All right, now what he's doing, fellas, see the right guard 66? All he's doing is closing the space. You see what I mean? He still has that posture. He has his back arched. He has his foot firing. All he did is take himself from here to there, but he ended up like this. He didn't end up over his center of gravity. So he just took himself, he picked that foot up, he fired his feet, all right? But he only go part way. Why would you only go part way? Because if he goes out or in, you can recover with him. So a lot of people don't know how to teach people to jump because they go too far into the guy. Like Howard would say, close the space. So you see where he is? Now watch his left hand. I think he puts it on the shoulder point. The other hand is in the chest. You know, just like Howard says, who cares? Put your hands on him. All right, so watch the right guard. You with me? We're good, right? All right, no confusion there. Okay, here we go. All right, what's the left tackle? All right, what angle did he use from that earlier one I showed you? What, are, what do I call that angle? A, but what do, you think he, what do you think he did? He went too what? Far, too far, because watch. See that? So what am I promoting? Okay, again, Scotty will show you how to do it. When this guy goes out here, this left tackle, and he wants to short set the guy, I don't like right. this. But what I'm saying, I know, I know. Okay, pocket. All right, but when this guy goes out like this, and this is Tony, Tony loves this stuff. When he goes out here like this, don't go so far. Boom, boom, boom. This guy's going all the way over too far. You could go over further if I'm deeper, right? When you go flatter, use your outside hand. Only get a quarter of them, okay? So this is another example of that angle, but the guy went too far, all right? Why not get on the guy that quick, all right? As long as you're inside out slightly and use your outside hand because that's the closest thing to the guy. You will disrupt his momentum. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, 31, here we go. All right. Okay, you don't want the quarterback to get killed like that, obviously. So you got to know when you take the angles how far you're going. All right, watch the right guard here now. Okay, 66. Boom. All right, here's Howard Mudd stuff. The guy's getting bull. Watch him hop back. Flop, whatever you want to call it. Okay? All right, so what he's doing, he's got his left hand in on the shoulder point. All right? He'd have been better off if he would have jumped him like he did before. But for whatever reason, he didn't. But watch him anchor down here. All right? All right, there's a good example. All right, let's go to this one here. 112. All right, watch the right guard here now, okay? All right, now, watch that guy. Hell of a move, right? Two steps up, head fake, inside swat. Whatever this guy's got, he's got a strong inside arm. See that inside arm? And he's taking it to that guy, whether it's under the armpit, whether it's on the shoulder point. But what I'm saying is, get that inside hand ready, all right? Uh, you know, that guy's coming out here at 66, so boom, that, that hand is ready. Whether you clamp it and club it like Paul, but if you just come out here and, 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 and you're, this hand isn't ready to do something, you're never going to stop the guy, right? He's going to knock your hands down, he's going to do whatever you, whatever you do. But this guy's got a good feeling of a strong inside hand. That's Larry Chester, okay? Uh, all right. Uh, Chris. What? Chris. Chris Chester? Yes. All right, I apologize to him, but, but I don't know him, so whatever. All right, now.
Whoa. Okay. <laughs> All right, we love that. All right, let's go to the next thing right here. Strollo's drills, right? All right, like I say, this guy right here, this guy knows more football than anybody I know. He was a tight end coach at Penn State last year. He's the O-line coach at Ball State. If you got a chance to go see him, bring him in, go see him, whatever. He'll blow your mind and he'll say, shit, why couldn't I think of that? Uh, all right, so let's just look at this here right here, okay? All right, I got to see where I, all right, now, let's look at the center here, right? The center basically is, no, let's not look at the center. I want to get to where I want to get to, all right? I want to go 051, all right, uh, I'm sorry, here we go. All right, yeah, maybe I'm looking at the center. All right, all right, watch, watch this guy right here. See the second guy in? See his feet? As crazy as it sounds, now they're using the medicine balls to get a short target, right? This guy might want to drop a little deeper. What I'm seeing, this is the right guard blocking a three. All right, now the three's not coming at him, but what's he doing with both feet? He's losing up. Round, but he isn't talking like the way I used to teach it would be a drop step and go forward. He's got two feet behind him. Behind him. He's going forward. The upper body's going forward. He's not going backwards where you're going to get fired. He's going forward. But when he hits the guy, his feet are where? <laughs> Underneath him. Or really behind him. Because that's where you're strongest. Fellas, where you're the strongest is where you're using your anchors. Your anchors are either your hands in front of you or your feet behind you. They're not one foot ahead of the other. It could be your head if you've got short arms. But the use of feet anchored into the ground, whatever, moving, all right, not in front of you, all right, is when you strike, you will not get splashed, okay? Have I lost anybody on that? All right, so he's just practicing these drills here. All right, okay, 057. All right, so watch the center, all right? Now, I don't know what play it would be, but he's got a nose that's shaded. I mean, so what I'm saying to you, do we all understand about the gatherability, the shorts, pee, pee steps, little steps, okay? Look how tight their hands are. Because he keeps their hands so tight, they roll meatballs, they roll tennis balls with their hands, they're climbing, all that good stuff, all right? All right, 109, let's go here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now what I'm saying is crazy as it's not, well, you're going to say the guy on defense is going to blow into me. Hard no matter it what he does to you because if you step forward with a forward step, he's going to get you with one foot ahead of the other and he's going to knock your ass back. If your feet are not underneath you when you strike, you're going to get knocked back. It's, it's, it's a fact. It's not some shit I, invite, I invented, right? Uh, but these are just some drills that they're, and then the wide base and all that good stuff there, okay? All right, now let's go to the third one here. Okay, go to so. 023. All right, all right, let's go. All right, so this would be, you know, whether it's a right tackle turning out on a wide guy, whether it's a, uh, you know, whatever. You know, he's going for width. He's losing. Gr so everybody lost ground in the old days, right? But we only lost ground with one foot. All right. All right, so that's good with that one. Let me see where the hell else I am now. Here, let's go to number three, Jets edits. Okay. All right, here we go. Jets edits. All right, let's go to 152. Uh, here's your here's your boy Tony. This is this is DeBrickashore Ferguson doing the same thing, right? He's got some stretch play going to the open side. You with me? Uh, you know, it's not a wide play. It's it's not it's not up the gut. It's a it's a stretch. It's going for about the the C gap or his outside leg. So he's losing ground. Then what happens is boom boom. So uh, he's losing ground with two feet, and now he's got his inside hand under the armpit. He's trying to twist the guy out. You know what I mean? He's not going to let that guy read direct, whether you put your hand on the armpit to control him or, or clamp the shoulder, you've got to define him and obviously keep him there. You know, you don't want him to come back inside and retrace, whatever all that stuff is called. All right. Okay. Let's go to mid zone. Let's
All right. Okay, let's go to mid zone it's itself, uh, game clips. And I want to go to 03. All right, now, watch the center. And Tony, you know this, you had Nick. The center is blocking this nose, and it's more of a stretch play, all right? Watch the center's feet. He's coming back two steps, all right? What he's doing is he's putting the backside long. When he hits that guy, his feet are behind him, all right? My bottom line is he's using a backside, one-armed, long-armed block, whatever that's called. All right, he did fall down at the end, but uh, I just wanted to show you that one here. All right, Let, let's see what he does here. Let, let's see if the center loses ground at all. There he is, see him lose ground? Look at that, he's blocking now. The guy on defense ain't doing a shit, right? We know that. But what I'm saying to you, how many, and I did the same thing years ago. Oh, we gotta blow off the ball. We gotta, we gotta take a big reach step, you know what I mean? I gotta go right down the line. That's why I used to coach. Lose ground. Lose ground with two steps. Lock, lock your arm out, because when the guy hits you, you got your feet underneath you. Whatever that whole physiology concept is. I don't know physics and shit like that. I know when your legs are behind you, you're strongest, all right? And some, somebody that, you know, is coaching like we did in 1950 is going to say I'm crazy, but you got to keep up with the times. And all I can know is one of the best centers of football, his feet are behind him when he executes that block. All right, let's go to the next thing right here. All right, let's go to Ben plays. Now, this is just an example of some predetermined cutback plays, fellas. All right, now, what am I saying is here, all we're saying is, we're given the illusion we're running an inside zone. This guy's coming back to cut off the backside. This guy's influencing him to run the flat. Somebody's got to cover the flat. Oh, this is just a predetermined cutback, all right? So what I'm saying to you, when you guys run the zone read plays, whatever, uh, whether you run them strong or read, you, you can say, okay, we're going to run the same play and we're going to call bend or we're going to call cut back. I don't give a shit what you call it, but notice these guys are blocking the play as if they want it to cut back. You with me? See how this guard's accepting him and throwing him? And see how this tackle's shoving him? This would almost be this would almost be what the backside guard should do on a guy, a three technique when they're zone blocking. See how he's, his hands are on him rather than hitting the shoulder and he can torque him and the ball would cut behind him. But anyway, this is a cutback play. I just wanted so, something to think about. Okay. Uh, oh, 24. All right. Same thing, okay. See what the left guard and left tackle are trying to do? They're kind of dicking with them. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to give the illusion we're going over here, but we know the ball's going back here somewhere, right? A lot of people run that kind of stuff, okay? All right, now, let's go to the next thing here. Okay, I'm gonna go to a scissors, Sam, all right now. Well, what this play is, fellas, is, all right, a scissors means we're handing the ball over the top, behind the quarterback. A bend, we're handing the ball in front. So all we're doing is, we're calling the play, uh, I don't care, 93 scissors Sam. We're telling the fullback, you block the Sam, you block the Sam. We're telling these people to block the Mike, you guys block. So what, the blocking assignments we're using, fellas, are as if we're running a one-back play this way. You know, we're running a one-back play to the open side. Line's going to Will, these guys are going to Mike, but it's a predetermined cutback over the top handoff. So this would be scissors, Sam. See the fullbacks blocking Sam or the F? All right, boom, 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 okay? Whatever it is, all right. And, uh, okay, I got it. Here's another one, all right. See, there's the fullback, he's got the Sam. Now, not all these plays have this big of a hole, but it's just giving you some, something to think about. All right, Z's got the force. It's a wing, a wing side play, all right? So if you got a good running back, some misdirection is good, all right? All right, this next play here, fellas, is, uh, is a P scissors. This is a scissors when we pull somebody. All this is is a G play going this way. See the G guard pull? But we're given direction this way. So they don't play the G play as well when you see full flow, all right? Fullback's got the will as if you're running a two-back zone play, you know, lead back, Bob, will, whatever, boom. 
We could pull the center. We have pulled the center. Let's see, the center gets a little deep. All right. But anyway, I'm just saying is these are big plays and not too many people run them. I don't quite understand why. I mean, there's a lot of defenses, but that's some misdirection I wanted to show you. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, now I want to go to some stuff. Uh, I want to go down to, I did a study on the Eagles this year, all right? All right, so what I'm going to show you now is what I consider, well, I can open this damn thing. There we go. All right. All right, now, little steps. Here's what I'm talking about. Again, mark this name down. John Strollo, tight offensive line coach at Ball State. He says, best blocks, hands in front, together, all right? Big chest, feet underneath. Little steps, little steps. Watch this guy, Howard Mudd coached this guy, all right? Uh, watch this center here. He's right from the University of Cincinnati. His name is Kelsey, all right? Uh, so here we go. Just watch his footwork. Now he's blocking an inside zone play. All right. All right. Now, all right. What's he doing with his feet? Is he going forward with that second step? No. That second step comes back a little bit. He's got how many feet on the ground when he hits the guy? Two. Where's his hands? In front of him. What about his chest? Big chest, right? All right, we're good so far? Little steps, feet behind you, okay? I mean, there's all kinds of different blocks, obviously. Uh, all right, let's see him again here. Now, the running back should have run inside, but don't worry about the running back. Watch the center again. Now I'll show you, and again, Coach Stoutland does a great job, but I just happened to pick, pick this out one time here so I, I I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say that his right guard's no good or this that or the other I'm just giving an example of what big steps look like all right watch the right guard okay all right he takes big steps his back is bowed forward just a little bit he doesn't have a big chest whatever so watch all right what I'm saying is now you know obviously the guy looped whatever all right all right so let's go to another play here all right all right, now watch the right tackle, all right? Believe it or not, he does a very good job finishing the block. But watch him when he turns out, all right? I'm okay with, I'm okay if you've got to move your foot, left foot forward to get there. But when you strike, what did I tell you? When you strike, where should your feet be? Under your behind. Look where his foot goes. That's where the foot should be. Now, so you can, what I'm saying to you fellas, if you're number 65, I got no problem with him going out here like this. Watch, I'll actually go, I'll move my, you know, I'm going, but, 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 but before I get there, I better have, what I'm saying is this guy went here, here, that foot was in front of him, the guy hit him, knocked that foot back, displaced, is that Bober? Oh, you look like Bober. <laughs> Close him with the Giants. But anyway, are we good? I mean, I can't find a million examples. I'm trying to, sh I'm, I'm, I'm going to blow your minds now, all right? Because all the shit you've talked about, all right? All right, uh, and uh, whatever. So are we good with little steps, feet behind, all that good? All right, so I got to get to the end zone. All right, I watch 62. You see that separation he's got? He's trying to hook the guy. Well, the point is, if you can get separation with your inside hand, you in the lockout, whatever that thing is, now you can turn him out if you want with the inside hand, or it gives you time and space if you want to work your hips. Do you understand what I mean? I've got separation. I can go ahead and do this if I want to, if the guy's running like a bitch, but if I'm mired into the guy and trying to hook him, maybe I don't get it. So he's doing a reach hook block using separation to start with. You're looking at it, right? And the guy keeps running, so he turns him out and the ball carrier should cut back, but this is why I don't like these plays that come across the backfield. I'm okay with the ball going inside here. All right, let's go to the next play here. 
Uh, so what I'm saying, there's, an, there's, there's something about using a long arm. Using your One arm is longer than two, fellas. One arm is longer than two. Okay, as you know that one, okay? Well, let's watch him here. Now the guy, the running back cut back, etc. So get some separation. Ex Particularly the center when he's blocking a bear defense and he's trying to zone block and get past the nose. Watch, watch, okay? Whatever that is, I don't know what it is, but it's something, right? We, we, we know that. All right, now, uh, let's go to something else here real quick. Um, I want to go to, I want to close that. I want to go to, now wait till wait, you see this thing, fellas. This is uh, August Project, all right? General Run Study. How, how much, about five minutes? All right, watch this guy right here. That's a receiver in a one-on-one -on -one drill. All right, now again, when he blocks that guy, where's his feet? Behind him, right? I can't give you a better example. Now there's not, I mean, this isn't gonna happen a lot, right? Where's his hands? In front of him. What kind of chest does he have? Big chest. And he wins. All right, we're good at that one? All right. Uh, all right, now let's go to, I want to go to something else here real quick. Um, uh, let's go to Fro9, all right? Watch the center. As he's working the guy, look at it. He's climbing the guy, whatever the hell that's called, all right? I'm just talking about the finish with, I don't care if you call it double under, climbing, lifting. He's got, he's got a grab on him, you know what I mean? Watch him again, okay? That's a big ass nose guard he's blocking now. But you see that whole demeanor? Whatever that is. All right, now, I want to go to some stuff the Bengals do. I want to brag on Paul here a little bit. Uh, so um, I'm going to go to, I got to do a little of this here. Uh, I got to go to my other iPad. All right, let's watch the right guard. Oh, fuck. I don't want, I want 037. All right, here we go. Sorry, fellas. He's got that left hand. See where that left hand's ready to go? This isn't a jump set. I'll just give you an example on that, all right? Let's go to 126. Uh, watch his left hand. It's inside, okay? 147. All right? Same thing. All right, now watch when the guy goes inside. You guys that have all done the post foot thing, what do you think you do with your inside foot when the guy goes inside? The best thing isn't to pound the post foot, is to drop it, because that's the only way you can stay in front of it. And you see Paul trying to get his inside hand to that club thing that he talked about? There's the same thing. See the left hand? Now, what Paul would say, that guy right there is not really rushing. So as soon as you hit that guy with your inside hand, whether you jump him or not, you might want to separate because he's not really rushing. All right. I want to go to 522, and then we'll be about done here. All right. I want to go to 046. Okay, do you see what he's trying to simulate here? When that guy goes inside, if you don't get the punch on him, take that inside hand and clamp him and work your hips inside, okay? Block him like a, a, a top, he would say.
right, this is 72 here. Let's see what he does. All right. His, his post, his second step is coming, whatever. He, you know, he kind of puts his hands on him, whatever. All right, so what we're going to do, I didn't get through as much stuff as I can because I wanted to really, because uh, Paul does a great job with those guys. Uh, but what I want to do now is I want to bring up uh, Scotty Peters, okay? So we need about an hour here, Coach. And I coached this kid at the, now, um, he's going to have to hook his stuff up. I coached this kid at the New York Giants. Uh, when he came out of Arizona State at the Combine, he benched like 42 times, okay? He'll tell you right now he doesn't even believe in the bench press, all right? Crazy shit. He is the world champion of, in jiu-jitsu in his weight class, all right? This is one strong mother whatever, all right? Now, I took a liking to this guy because he is a tough son of a bitch, and he is one of the few guys that played, now that doesn't mean there aren't some, that actually knows how to coach. Now, most of the players say, well, you know, I did it this way, I did it that way. Do you know where my iPad is, the other one? Yes. Okay, uh, et cetera. Now, what he does, okay, he has what you call quick twitch movements. Watch him, all right? He's really trying to do the same thing that Paul does, but watch the quick twitch and watch some of the things he talks about with his, with his hips and the way his hand moves, etc. So I want to bring up here Scott Peters. Uh, I got to give him this microphone here, right? Okay. Does anybody not buy little steps, feet behind, hands in front? All right. Uh, thanks, Coach McNally. I appreciate that. I'm... Uh I didn't expect to speak, but looks like it's going to happen here. So we're going to uh, just go over some things today. I wanted to share with you, um, following up with all the other great uh, presenters, I think there's a lot of information being exchanged, and I wanted to maybe get a little specific about a couple things that may, uh, may be of help to you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, minimizing exposure. I see a lot of watching film with, uh, with Coach um, over the last week. Um, and he came out to Arizona and we watched some film and I, I've noticed a lot of players are, are keeping their hands wide. Um, not to beat a dead horse, I know we've heard all the boxing analogies, but I'll bring that back into play because I think um, there's a lot of parallels there uh, when it comes to uh, where you want to carry your hands and the kind of reasons for that. Um, you know, you could say that the chest is to football as the chin is to boxing. Um, so I see guys just letting their chest be a uh, a doormat for people and, and I don't like that because I think we have a chance that you know we should be doing more to protect that so I want to talk about just kind of you know minimizing exposure and then maximizing the damage that we can uh, you know inflict and, and, and I know coach uh, you know I know Howard uh, just spoke about you know being aggressive on pass protection which is I'm, I'm a fan of that I want to discourage and disrupt the foot or the feet of the uh, the defenders so uh, and coach McNally talks about playing long so those things come into play here. Um, we're going to get into that a, uh, angle A set a little bit. Just a couple little things that may be, may be able to help you guys out um, uh, if it's something you like. So um, limiting options. This is just a theoretical thing, just real briefly. Um, not to get too theoretical, but we'll talk a bit about it because um, I see guys too. Another thing besides just being wide with their hands and getting, you know, trying to get split down the middle. It's no fun when your sternum's getting collapsed. So we want to we want to try to prevent that. So we're going to do some things to minimize that. But but really. Um, taking options off the table. I see a lot of players that are just going, oh shoot, I mean, this guy could literally go down the middle and go to my left or to my right. I'm, I could get beat any which way. So I just tell players, and this is something, just a way of thinking, if you can kind of uh, understand where you're vulnerable, that's a huge aspect of the game. Because, you know, you're not always going to be, you can take things off the table. So in other words, um, and I'll show you what I mean specifically, but just to, as a concept, um, if I'm a guard and I'm blocking a three technique, if I just kind of, you know, trying to even up with them, and I don't know, I know, oh, shoot, I hope he doesn't go inside, I hope he doesn't, well, what if he goes outside, what if he comes down the middle? You've given this guy, you know, ultimately a three three way opportunity, uh, if you've especially if you haven't protected your own chest. So what I like to do and just think of it in this term, so if you have to protect your house 
you got two doors in the house and you got some burglar coming in and y you know you got a gun or whatever you're standing in the middle of the house you're going you're freaking out because you hear something you're turning your heads on a swivel you're, you're subject to pretty much anything that comes your way you're in a, in a state of paranoia now you set your your ass up to one of the doors and you aim the gun at the other door and then you know you've kept that one door protected now you know you're vulnerable in one door and that's the door across the hall you have your gun aimed at that therefore you can protect that door better that's just the mentality anyway if that works for you but the point being is that you can take things off the table. So, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Like just getting some body presence and things like that, where you can, you know, just for instance, if I'm a, if I'm pass, in pass pro, um, you know, if I'm a left guard, say, and I have a three technique, I like doing an inside out. Obviously, we're vulnerable on the inside, so one of the things we're going to do some hand stuff, but just kind of keeping that that inside uh, move, uh, keeping that away. So we can actually dictate. I believe this. So we can, in many cases, dictate what that guy's going to do in advance by giving him the path at least resistance, which would be outside. So I want to make sure my inside post is high. Just that body presence, that presence that he sees, and that inside post hand is strong, you're going to discourage that guy from the inside move. So that's part of it, is discouraging people from things, taking options away. And uh, we'll get into a couple things I'm going to just briefly touch on right now, what we're going to talk about. Well, so um, I have a punch that, that I think is pretty powerful. Um, most people that have felt it feel it's powerful, and most people that have trained in it and have applied it have agreed. Um, and that's called a pillar. We're about disruption, disrupting people's feet. That's going to go into that. Um, angle A, um, you know, that was what Coach McNally brought up and showed you with Tyron uh, Smith from the Cowboys, which did a great job with that. And I, I believe in that now after being a skeptic of it. But uh, I think it's a great thing, and I want to show a couple aspects of that. We're going to get into uh, a couple of uh, the bull rush and how we can uh, not only defend that but discourage that. Um, you know, we want to we want to discourage that. That's a big point because. You're, uh, you're subject to that, you're going to get more and more of that, and so, especially when you're opening up. Um, the long arm uh, pass rush, how many people have a problem with that? Nobody? I, I know there's a lot of people that have a problem with that, so, all right, so no one wants to own it. Well, there is a problem with the long arm, so if you haven't watched enough film, you'll notice. I guess the point being is I want to protect that, I have a couple things I'll show you for that, so, so you can give options to your players. Um, drop post. Coach McNally mentioned that. I know it seems a little backwards in thinking. Everybody talks about when we're post setting, posting inside as a guard or a tackle or whatever, we always want to set into the line of scrimmage. And that's a habit and that's something we've always done. Well that makes sense if you have your, your if, you can, if you can, but realistically when guys are getting edged a little bit you have to drop. So I'm going to show you a couple of things for that. It's, it's really powerful, but um, it's a little counterintuitive in terms of what we've all thought and heard for, for a long time. So I'll be regarding that. Um, and uh, I've got a couple drills I'll show you. So that's about it. We're going to get up here. Um, I'm going I'm to do, uh, this is Coach Pugh, Ryan Pugh. He's an assistant offensive line coach for University of Cincinnati. He's going to, he decided to be a, uh, a glutton for punishment here and jump up on stage. So um, I'm going to, what's that? Uh, yeah, I'll just let us in here. That's all right. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you uh, before we even do much with the hands, because I've got some clips of uh, some, some clips that we're going to show you too as to uh, you know each specific, specific item I, I mentioned. But I wanted to, to get real clear about my hands because um, I call it guard. I know um, uh, Blaze uh, Winter, you mentioned last night about how you want to have your, keep your hands protected. The boxers are here. Well, I like to carry my hands here and I call this guard. I mean, it's just what, it is a, bo a fighting reference. But if I have my elbows tight, my thumbs are up and I'm real, my shoulders are actually rolled forward. I see a lot of players here and, and a lot of, some players here and I personally think, you know, you're just inviting a stab. You know, you shouldn't, you know, if you, if you take a look at uh, most careers, you know, in football, most players, they don't, I don't know what the reason is behind it, but I don't think they quite trust their feet or maybe they just haven't developed their hands and kept them tight, but it doesn't cost you anything to protect yourself. And I think it's important we do that. You know, if you look at some, some players, you know, back to the boxing analogy, um, guys that use their chin as a setup tool to win don't have a very uh, a good, you know, post career. And, you know, take on Muhammad Ali, for instance. He set, himself, set people up with his own chin. We don't need to do that. And this is, this is football, but I wanted to reference that. So what I call this as guard is our hands are up, our thumbs are up, our elbows are bent. We're nice and relaxed. We, we want to have our, our hands up and, and loose, uh, as uh, Blaze mentioned last night. So elbows tight. I don't actually carry my elbows to my body. It's a little bit out in front. So I just kind of wring them out, bring them up here. 
Now I can actually deliver, I can attack, I can defend, I can counter, I can do all that stuff, and I'm loose. So even if that hand gets knocked down, it's not, it's not the end of the world, I'm not in bad shape. Again, my shoulders are forward, I can deliver a lot of power behind my strike. So that's my, what I call the guard position. So the best thing about that is even if you don't deliver a strike, at least you're not, you're not, you know, this is hard to defend if you've got a guy coming straight down the pipe, you know, so that's something we can work on, is getting your hands up here, nice and com compact and, and uh, very loose. So, um, mention that. I might I might actually do, let's do the, I'll do, I'll do the uh, technique stuff here. So I'm going to show you how I throw, um, this is a pillar, and this is really just about disrupting the footwork of the, of the defender. <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a very quick inside stab, so let's just say that here, you know, again, I have a left guard, and coach is a three technique, and I noticed that, you know, you'll notice the guys that are pretty good, they're not going to give you that chest, obviously. So, a lot of players are looking either that are throwing punches or throwing big haymakers down the pipe, and what happens is they get, they get caught out here with their butt outside, so their butt leaning back, and that's why many guys have gone away from really kind of throwing hands. So, well, I want to still throw my hands. I want my hands in, in my stance, and I want to make, con the thing about this pillar is it makes contact when it's fully extended. So, and the thumb is up, so that's, the coach brought up my bench press. That I can say that, I guess, as someone who, yeah, I benched a lot, but I can tell you what, there's a correlation between, well, there's no correlation, rather, between the bench press and what you do from, from the standpoint of, of uh, on the field and your strength. Because, and there may be, there may be some, but I, I think that there's a big tipping point as to when you start losing some function because you can't even touch your elbows together, and as the case it was for, for me. Because, you know, if I can't touch my elbows together, now I've done a couple things. Elbows are automatically flaring out. My energy, kinetic energy, goes out the side, out the back. Lose a lot of power there. My thumbs are in, and there's always a tendency to do this. When, when your elbows are out versus when I'm here, and that's a big part of it. We, we do a lot more bench, especially straight bar bench, and we even do any hand work in the off season. I think that's exactly why you're seeing that correlate, and I think it's an epidemic for players because they're, you know, I watch enough, enough tape, you see guys getting blown up. It's always their hands are here. They're holding them here or holding them down. So this is just a th kind of a theory based on, well, this is the principle that based on, uh, that I've found that, that's common among a lot of martial arts disciplines, whatever. So it's about extension and length, and the power is not driven from the press. It's from the speed to the lockout and to the extension using the subscapula. So the, the arm is already locked out by the time he runs into it. So like I call this a post if it's one hand, he's running into, you know, his sternum is running, in, or his, his shoulder is running into a post, you're gonna experience, you know, some whiplash here. So that is not a huge investment on my part to do that. And I'll show you how this works. So, so what I wanna do is, is my hands are here, now, as I throw, I'm set, I'm, gonna th I'm just going to walk through. I'll do one hand here so you can see. So this hand stays up, and, and as I deliver this post, this pillar, my, hand, my thumb is up, and as I come close to contact, I screw my thumb out just a bit, just a bit. And I'm in contact with it heel. So coach is going to give me a firm, you know, so I'm here. So he walks in. So it's real quick. I don't have to actually bring it from, I don't have to bring, I don't know if everybody can see that, hopefully. Can you turn and put your back to us? Yeah, sure. You guys want to stand up and watch this, the whole thing. If you're not going to get those things out of the So the elbow's in. So it's like I'm not going to go hard here. I'm just going to show. Can everybody see? I'll do a couple angles. So I'm, I'm, making, I'm making contact. It's easy for me to just extend this, this arm. So I'll go without dropping off the stage, but it's not, a lot of it's not a lot of effort. It's just enough to pop this guy's feet. It's really disruptive. This guy's crazy, man. This is, what's that? So, is that, is that true about the meth? <laughs> what's that? I'm the left guard. Now, Coach McNally, this is a 70-year-old man that can rush, all right? <laughs> Dang, he's gonna make me do like a snap down or something. So, so. He's, so see how fast he gets his hands on because we're always worried about getting, but he, and it's he's almost fully locked out. So is that, were you? Yeah, it's like your, this slow motion. I'm going boom, boom. 
and he's locking his hip at the same my, time. My hip. Thing is when he does that, he locks his hip. It's, I didn't understand at first, and then I started to do it. And then when you snap the hand, you lock the hip or whatever you. Well, my back hip. Okay, so my kick, my kick leg is is going to be involved in this too. I'm not leaning, of course. That's that's a problem for most guys that throw punches. I have I have a little bit of flexion or uh, extension in my back hip and my kick leg. So as I have a lot of power here, it's structural power. I can actually, see I'm not moving. I mean, I'm not, I'm not leaning rather. My hips stay engaged, my lower back is arched, everything's tight, boom, I can deliver. I can stop him, I'm not invested, I'm not out anything. This is easy, it takes repetition. So I'll show you a drill really quickly that I like that teaches uh, players how to, uh, to do this and execute it. Um, it's a weird coordination. You notice um, this, is a, this is another uh, fighting art tool. Extension of the punch is not just here, it's here, it's a plus. Guys that throw the punch, and it's, the purpose is because they're getting extra snap as they also protect their chin. So I'm hearing, boom, it's that extra piece that's going to get the guy knocked out. As the hand comes across, it's that subscapular uh, pop that you get. So these are called subscapular push-ups. This is really the best way I know how to show people how to do it. Elbows don't bend, thumbs are up. I'm about like, my, my uh, arms are the shoulder width and I'm not touching. All I'm doing is trying to touch my, uh, my shoulder blades together and press. The elbows don't bend. You got a lot of power, so coach is gonna lean on me just a bit so I can show, demonstrate, or get here. I'm just gonna show you guys, can you see? So he's gonna lean, see how much, I'm not, my elbow doesn't bend, but look how much power I got. It's a lot, it's a lot of power. You can stop people's feet with that. You right? Sorry, so. When you do that, could you keep your head and body back too so they don't think you're leaning in? Yeah, hey, I don't mean to be lean, I'm just gonna show everybody, you know? Yeah, so, so we'll do that with the pad. You don't have to lean with this, and that's the nice part. Because I get it, you don't want to, let's do, uh, actually we don't need that. So, um, we're going to do, you guys have probably seen that timing punch drill. Have you done that before? So you walk in, or guys are here, they're punching. What I'm going to do is I'm starting with my elbows and arms already locked. So this is a finished position. kind of teaches it, I find it's a good way uh, to, to, to get people to understand it, know their range, and know what it feels like at the end so they can work backwards and really, and really master this. So coach is just going to do like three. He's gonna, my arm's already locked out. See, I'm not, my elbow's never once bent. I don't know if you guys, is that, is that enough to rock your head? Yeah. So it stops the feet. We're not going to obviously throw them from there. We're going to have our hands here. But we can deliver enough power without compromising our balance too. So that's, uh, we're, we'll get into the, you guys have any questions on that right now? This is the guy that's on his edge pretty much he's talking about. Other than the push-ups, are there any other weight room types of exercises? other than bench to develop that You can do some stuff with, uh, you can do dips with that. I mean, guys are gonna, I know bench, it's like asking the belts. football people not to do it. Belts? belts? Yeah, there's a, I mean. Belt, uh, dumbbells. Oh, dumbbells, yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you're benching, I think the thumbs up is important, you know, because everybody's talked about that in here. So why would we practice anything that's, that's not that? You know, I just know that as a player, it, it hurt me. So, you know, I know it's, so I feel, feel pretty strongly about it, I think. When we're out here, it's just you build that me muscle memory and then you get your hands have this tendency and if you watch film, what are the percentage of guys that do that, you know? Because everybody's doing this, this flat bench, but. Scotty, without <coughs> disrupting, could you show the guy maybe pinching inside from that three? Yeah, do you want me to do the drop? I'm just saying, well, however, whatever it is, but I mean, you know, he, you know, he's gonna go in, he's gonna go out, he's gonna all those things. Yeah, we're gonna do that. I was gonna show, I'm gonna show, okay, so this is called, uh, this is a single post, okay? So if I'm a, this is what I wanted to mention too, I don't know that I talked about this yet. So here's his chest, everybody's trying to go for the chest, I'm not necessarily trying to do that. I, I don't know what I'm going to get in the stance, but I know that what's available for the most part is this big pad right here, and I know that's right there for me. If I can touch that, and again, the whole point is not to, I'm not trying to decleat the guy. I'm not trying to hit a home run. I just want to disrupt his feet a little bit. It doesn't take a lot of effort to do that, so I'm, I'm a believer in it because I've seen it. I'm skeptic because I've had to, had to put it through the test a little bit, but it, it seems to, to be a really effective way to go. If I'm a guard again, so coach is going to come up, I'm just not going to, if you guys can all see him, said, hey, I'm going to touch here, I'm going to touch, I'm going to touch there, now that's not going to, that's not the, that's not over, right? This is my other hand, it's a bait hand in a lot of cases if he's up here. I know that if my hands are up, you won't see it a lot on the film where the guy's hands are down because no one's going to key that hand, but a lot of the players are keen and trying to chop that outside arm, right? So I already know that. Remember taking things off the table, setting this guy up? Now he's going to, I've, I've posted, he's going to chop, I'm going to take him here, I'm just going to widen him. It's over. 
But this hand was probably going to have to refit as well. So as coach, as I touch the shoulder, his, his hand may come up underneath. I refit, she chops, and I widen. It's a very uh, conservative way to do it. It's very effective. It does, it's a skill, though, so it takes some time. You guys have to work that. But, uh, he's always locked, correct me if I'm wrong, he's always seems to be locked out. Always locked out, yeah, because it, I found it, it's really hard when, you're, and then on the inside rush or the inside move, We'll, we'll show that on film, but um, Coach said brought that up when a defender is going inside. You'll see here, here everybody's you know taught to do this right now. But what happens is my arms are, are bent. Now I'm having to hop back and get that separation to come back to extension. So instead, I'm you know, th you know these are these crazy stuff happens out there. So you can't you know figure all the this is good for everything. But as a as a principle, the hip when it's extended is extremely powerful. It's where the power comes from. So as Coach comes inside. I'm gonna have to come here, so I, I, I bring my hip back. If you guys can see that without breaking the equipment here. Um, see if I did it from. Show that again. Yeah, well, I'm wondering what the best angle would be. Probably facing. We'll do facing and behind. Talks about engaging his hip, so, whether it's just a straight. Here, maybe stand here. So, you're, yeah, you're gonna cross. Oh, I'll cross there. Inside. Okay. Okay. So we're walking through. So coach is crossing. Okay, and now he's crossing my. Here, here, just give me your chest. So. See how I'm here? He's, he's getting on this part of my body. Now I have to, have to bring my, my hip back. But see, I'm not just bringing it back and, and leaning. I'm bringing it back and forward. So boom. Do you feel how strong that is? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like bullying him, man. Yeah, turn, put your butt this way. Okay. Yeah. So this is just, I'm going to show you just for the sake of the drill. That this is my inside arm. And coach's pressure on this side. See, my, my foot's back. But it's, it has to do with my hip. My hip is the power. Um, buy a couple of beers afterwards. Huh? <laughs> so um, yeah, that's really powerful though. When you see people that lose power, it's again, it's something to it. When you look at the, the hips being behind the body, that somehow the elbows flare. We're not doing any, any of that. The hips forward and the elbows are in. And that's- uh, you show a punch on a three with, with your inside hand, like he's just a three, how the inside hip engages? Yeah, so, so I'm just walking the field, set, set, go. His right hip is engaged. Now. My hip is engaged. It's it's here. It's it's not behind my body. So I can I can stick that again with. Uh, and you don't know what the surface will be, but whatever the near point is, maybe the shoulder. I like the shoulder because if you can stun this guy's feet, it's like a lever. So the tighter, the wider you hit on that shoulder, how it does it. It makes his his, his whole body turn a bit. And all it is is just a moment for us to stop his feet and not give this guy uh, a chance to run through us. So. Which is an advantage. Is that good for that? Okay, so we're gonna call that the pillar. Obviously, you can do that in both hands, but um, but I find it pretty effective. We're gonna call that the pillar. Obviously, you can do that in both hands, but um, but I find it pretty effective. And I'm gonna do the angle. What about for like an outside rush passive? Yeah. Well, it just depends on the situation. Because I mean, angle A, for instance, we're talking about. He showed with Dallas flatter angle. He's gonna use the outside. Yeah. Let's show the angle A real quick. I've got some cutups we'll talk about. But if I was gonna do, we've got a small stage, but. If I'm, if I'm, you're gonna go there, coach. This way, because you got more room, I think. Which way? Well, you face this way, like you're. Like I'm facing you guys. And you over here. Got it. Okay, so I'm just setting out or whatever, and just so yeah. This is the wide guy. Okay, so so I'm kicking out, I'm kicking out flat, touching here, touching here, and then boom. Okay, it's your touching. You're not trying to knock him off his feet, but you saw Tyron do it. Now I was, I was very skeptical on this because I'm like, how does this work? Well, what it does do, from what I can tell, is it keeps our shoulders fairly square. How many guys do we talk about in this room about how shoulders are turned all the time? It's everybody. It's almost not everybody, but a lot of people. So if I can stay square, touch, boom, boom, I got here. I'm just making contact enough to disrupt this guy's feet off the ball. He's, he's now not the, nearly the threat he could be if he has three uh, hard steps upfield and he's running, running fast, right? Order the guy. He's not going all the way to him because the guy will beat him underneath. Yeah, I'm staying inside out like you saw the tackle from the Redskins. Yes, sir. That's very good, but what happens if uh, the player has shorter arms? 
Short, shorter arms? Maybe you play center or something? I'm just kidding. I don't know. Ben takes a bar and you just have shorter arms. Everything is good when the arms are five feet long enough. You know, this is not, you know, maybe, maybe in that case, if you don't feel like, you know, it's something you might have to try, but if it's not working out as, with shorter arms, there's other ways to do it. And obviously, if you use those arms, I don't think it's got anything to do with the shits. How quick do you lock them out? And Almost hold him full. He'll, he'll demonstrate like a guard on a three-four. Yeah, we'll do that too. But that, yeah, that's that's true. I mean, if you're, I've seen guys that have quote short arms and they're still very good with their hands. So it's just really more so about where they're protecting them, where they're carrying them, and how quickly they can land them. Because I'm not doing a lot of exertion. I'm doing this. It's a, uh, and this actually works. Uh, there, all right, we'll do one more as tackle. So I'm not quite going. I'm not going flat, but I'm going at, a, at, a, at a, an angle. So so go. So I'll touch him here. And then as he comes up field, I'm here. Even if, if I engage this guy wide, I can then turn him. If you look at the width, then we talk about not turning, and I don't, I don't like to talk about turning, but if you get a guy up here from a distance because you got more width, you just met him way out wide. We're talking about maybe a nine, a wide rusher. Now all of a sudden, we turn him and we, we, we walk him up field. So you get, you're protected there. I like it. It's a, good, it's a great option for players. It keeps us square. I see a lot of guys that are sitting out here. They're kicking, kicking, three kicks, and they're opening. Their chest is open, and they're done. So that's the, this is the angle A set. Coach McNally and, uh, developed that, and, and we're adding little tweaks to it, and it's great. So I hopefully, does anybody have any questions? Okay, sir? Yes. Show them where your hands are. Where I'm setting? Okay, my hands are here, always here. So I'm protecting myself. I'm, I'm kicking here. I'm touching when it, and that thing touches. It's always a timing thing. My thumb is in on the, on the outside hand, okay? I call this a one, two. So one, two, okay? So now I've just touched the hand. I've, just, I've done something to disrupt his feet with this hand. I'm not over committed. I'm inside out. This hand. Now I can take this and now if he wants to go, he's only going to go that way. He feels disrupted. He's not going to come inside me, okay? He's going to try to go upfield immediately unless you overset, which we're not going to do because we're staying inside out. Yes, sir? When you lock out, there's no up, there's no upward lift, there's no, it's just... Like upward lift, like, like grabbing and lifting? Yeah. Well, if I happen to get the, ch I'm gonna have, to, I want to get my hands secure and fit. I want to, I want to seal it up and lock him out. No question about that. I'm talking about the first initial strike. If it's the shoulder, I'm not gonna grab and try to lift him there because that's not ideal. I'm gonna refit that hand and work for better position. But what I've done is I've, e I've neutralized this guy, made it like a lot harder for him to, to punish me upfield because of his speed. You know. Uh, can you show him the difference when you use your inside hand how the thumb is out different from the outside? Yes. So the landing of the outside hand. Now this is, call it's like one two. So so the, the one hand is the outside hand. I'm, I'm not, I can't really do it this way. My wrist doesn't bend that way. It's not going to be effective. I'm just going to touch with this hand. My thumb is in for this case. Just touch, and then this one comes. This one comes to that pillar. Touch, boom. Touch, boom. Okay. It's making contact with a straight arm, but I'm able to. But I'm in great position because I'm inside out. Does that make sense? So this is this hand fits nice right here because it's just a perfect cup. My inside post hand. Yeah, this one just happens to touch down. This doesn't matter. This is just a little bit of a, this is just a touch and disrupt. What, what he's saying, and I don't mean to interrupt him, but he's got a lot of things to, with his nose. He's not trying to grab the guy as much as stun him to reroute him. Stun him and refit. How quickly his hands come up and in front of him. I'm all for grab and go. I'm not, I'm not saying we're just going to hit people and let them go back. I want to, I, this is just a situation where whatever's available, if, if the guy's chest plate, look, if I touch here, great. And if I'm here, I'm going to take it. I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock him up. I want to I tighten my elbows down. I, I screw my thumbs out. I got my elbows down. And I can do what I have to do now. It's, it's just more just kind of giving, taking away this guy's advantage off the snap. Because this is, a, you know, these guys are running full speed. So it's tough. We're trying to just you know, limit their opportunities, as I mentioned. Does that make sense? He's good? We'll move on to the next one. Uh, what do we got here? I've been working with him all week. The thing I notice is how quick he gets his hands on you. He doesn't hold them away from his body at all like this. It's almost like he's um, not a full lock, but he's all, and everything is, and if he's into the guy here, he might just bring it back. And, I mean, he can it better than I it's hard. It, it's quick. Well, and I'm not, I'm not really delivering. I'm not pulling him back from here. That's when I see that happen, too. This is, this is hard because it, if a defend, defensive lineman tries to, some of these guys are trying to stutter step and to change our, change our heartbeat, try to screw us, up, screw us up our timing. So if I'm here, I don't have to really take it very far. It's only from right here to literally boom, boom, boom. So and you feel it's strong, right? Yeah. 
So it's real strong, it's powerful, it's more mechanics versus trying to hit guys harder, if that makes any sense. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but it's mechanics, and that comes from the subscapular. So um, another thing we want to do, uh, so I mentioned just step one, protect yourself, it's good, always good, and before you get into the fight, the guy that drops his hands, gets knocked out, it's, it's simply, you know, you gotta have a great haymaker and all that, but you're not gonna make it in boxing without a good defense. So you a guy that might be uh, an end, uh, a three technique or a five, a wife. shakes and bakes and swats and scrimmages, any of those kind of moves? Sure, I don't know, we have limited space, but we could try, just just to yeah, see what the hands look like. Just do whatever you wanna do, I guess, so. So, so, say go. so in that case, I'm gonna post upward because he didn't have to threaten me. Yeah, does that make sense? So if, if he did beat me, so I'm here, I have to drop it, but I'm still firm here and it stops him. Do that one more time. Watch how it's hip engaged as he's working. So you're going across? Watch his right hip. So I'm, so I'm here, so go. Oh, see, if I got here, it's just throwing that hip through. That is, that is extending. Does that feel, Coach, Coach Ken, you can lean on me here. So if the hip is through. Okay, but I'm not leaning, so I can take it off. So if he just takes all the pressure, I'm not, I'm not overextended, okay? Um. Um, so, okay. so a bull rush, I, I've got a video we're doing, I'm coaching, I think John has it, it'll probably be on the cool clinic thing, where you got five techniques to stop a bull, but I'm going to show you at least one today, pretty effective, this one's a really simple, and uh, it's, it's a good one for everybody to know, so my hands are here, I shoot my hands and I miss, coach has got his hands there, all I'm doing is I'm not dis disconnecting like the hop, all that stuff, I agree, is a great, great tool for everybody. But this is a, another tool if you're just getting pushed back. So I call this the cuff. So the pressure, we're not going to go, I'm going to, I have my hands on something. At least I have pads, but it's almost like a lever, a handle. You know, coach is going to put a little pressure, I'm not going to take him down. So I do this, boom, okay? I snap the hands together, it cuffs his hands, it takes the leverage away because I'm hopping at the same time. So I'm not going to take you down, but push. I hop and he's on the ground. It's very simple. It's not a trap. I don't disconnect my hands. I use my hands to. I grab these. Oh, I don't want to. Uh, here, be ready then. So just push. Okay. So you're right. So all I'm doing is snapping the hands. You're we're snapping the hands down. You're right. Yeah. I'll buy him two beers now. We practice. We practice. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, so you snap. It's just the wrist coming down. So, coach, you can try it to me. I have you, and then all he's going to do is boom. Yeah. And then what does it is the distance. He has to jump back. Almost. It's not quite hopping back like the traditional hop we're doing to stop it. It's almost like your hips come back. It's boom. You're feeding his face to the ground. Next. It's elbows make contact. So if you notice here, we're not gonna go do it anymore, but up here, I'm, I'm, see how I am? I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna come up here. I don't wanna do it here. It's like right, my elbow's gonna make contact this in this point here. So, boom, okay? You guys see it? And this thing actually can be like a handle for you. Boom, you can slam it. You know, you shouldn't have to raise up too much, but as you get better at it, it's just, all you're trying to do is get the guy to this position. Okay, that's one of the, one of the techniques. We got a bunch more, but they're all simple and they're easy. I like having a number of them because you don't know who you're gonna deal with. You might have a guy that that doesn't work, for, work on. So I'm trying not only to uh, defend it. Obviously, step one is defense. Yep, we're gonna do the long arm. Step one is defense, step two is discouraging that guy from ever trying that again. So, now the long arm. 
guys get their hands inside and I see this a ton of times, we've already seen it. So this is a, what I don't see anybody doing. Very simple, obviously step one is not letting this guy hit his hand on your chest. Step two, from here, I can either, the smallest circles possible, I'm not coming wide, because that gives me, it, it actually alters my position, it can put me down. I'm just gonna rub and come back underneath. So, a small circle in, so he's pushing. So I've just raised his center of gravity with my hip. So I know it's as basic as it gets, but that's what works. You keep that thing in there and... Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going to just refit that hand. Is this thing going to keep us? My hips are hopping too. I mean, I, mean, I have to stay, keep my hips. Yeah, so he's going to... Coach is pushing me, so I'm here. If I have to hop, I'll hop. If I don't, I'll keep sitting. You know, it just depends on the pressure. But that thing is the tight circle. So, coach is here. I'm just going. I'll be a little square, more square. He's here. Just coming up underneath. Now, if he happens to catch my catch my pad right here, which is unlikely, but if he does, I'm gonna I'm gonna squeeze that thing in. Sorry. You're right. <laughs> no, I'm, good. I'm gonna break the arm. You can. You can really discourage that thing because it comes out. He's hyperextended. And what I want to do. Sorry, coach. So I won't do that very. So it's here. I'm gonna just gonna come up underneath. Real subtle, simple, easy, okay? Um, another thing you can do, if that thing gets caught on you, and I'm not able to do it and it's here, I can just take it again, or whatever it may, I may have, I may have a handle, and I'm gonna hop back and I'm just gonna drop it down that way again, just by collapsing it outside in. Yes, sir? How would you do it with the long arm right underneath your chin? How would I do the long arm right there? Um, so if it's here, same thing, he's gonna grab that thing, and, and I'm not, I might even bring my chin down and extend his freaking arm. I don't know, I mean, everything happens. It's, it's exploiting anatomy, you know? But if he's that high, I, I think I like my chances. All I need to do is deflect it a little bit, too. So even if he's that high, I'm coming up underneath here, I'm just rolling it out. I'm getting extension, so. Things happen a million miles an hour, but you can start to develop that as a player, but there's a, there's a number of good techniques for it. I think I wanted to get the video. So is that pillar in the right guard? This is not an example of someone doing it right. This is an example of an opportunity. If you kind of look at the guy's shoulder here, this is available right here. Boom! Touch it. Touch it with the inside hand, and then you don't. It's always it's it's often there, you know. If you take this is right here, you got another opportunity. This guy doesn't. He tries, but he's not. You look at his hips are behind him. Whatever. So this guy here just doesn't connect. I mean, that thing should be hit on now. Boom, touch it, disrupt him, widen him. Don't wait and, and accept this. And he's off balance. Unless he just says touch it. Yeah, I'm not trying to crush it, you know. I'm trying to touch it because enough, that's enough if you do it properly. Here, what do we got here? This is an opportunity, again, for angle A. Um, I'm not work. this isn't working. Whatever. And angle A is a Angle A. See what happened? You see these guys? Yeah, sorry, coach. These guys are turning, so he's creating that short corner. So angle A could could potentially kind of shut this guy down before he gets started. So that was what what coach showed you with Tyron Smith from the Cowboys. This is a guard doing it or not doing it, but potentially this is a situation. So you can see what he's doing here. I'm not sure what he's doing here, trying to club him, but uh, turning, lunging. But an angle A set would be effective here with that inside post. Uh, the bull rush, again, you know, we've all seen it. You know, if you get a guy that's a really stout guy, like this guy here from the Dolphins, this guy's always, he's almost doing the double unders as a bull rush. So we can account for that. Either strike him right now, because you'll see his chest, boom, right now, hit it. Hit it, understand that, and then you can come back to that cuff if you have to, drag his face down, discourage this. Or, uh, you know, you could potentially short set, of course, so, you know, that's an option, and, and refit and get your own double unders under there and lift him up, change his center of gravity. This guy is a proponent of Howard's jumping. Yeah, I like the aggressive stuff, and then still so here's another guy bull rushing, but 
So this, this guy gets caught, hands down, just comes up underneath. So all these options are available for us. So here, you know, a lot of options there. You can just, obviously, he's, 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 uh, he's off balance, but you could do that cuff drill. And then here's the cuff. This is some pads on it. You already saw me do it. It's really easy. See how I went jump too, just the jump or whatever, you know, you're just going to get separation so you can distance yourself. So here's a long arm if you, you guys already know what it is, but it's just devastating. So if you watch these guys, if they just sink that, if they snap that arm back inside, number one, they should be protecting. Watch right tackle 77. Let's get the lid up. Not good. So there's a post leg drop, you know, again, we talked about it. But these are situations where the right tackle is not. You know, he's getting beat. He needs, to, he needs to separate and keep that, length, that left arm long, put pressure on that shoulder so he can get himself back over there. Sometimes you might have to actually give a slight uh, club. I know uh, Coach, uh, and doesn't Coach Alexander teach that a little bit too with the club? So you want to get, um, just so you can get your body back in position. But um, that, uh, I think that's the last one. So uh, there's some, any, do you have any questions on these, on the techniques and on the concepts? Good, we're good. questions about a tough rush that you see, you put him at center, guard, anywhere. I think, this guy's the best. So, I mean, you got a question. What about playing tackle on an angle A set and you're getting a wipe from the defensive end? You're getting a wipe like the swipe of the hands? Yeah, you're going to your one-two. Um, maybe Coach can show. So, so I'm, I'm here, and he's going to do what now? Swipe, swipe the hands. My hands are soft, right? I'm going to make contact here. This is a, oftentimes a bait hand. Now you're talking about the outside swipe? Yeah, when you're doing your one-two. You know, okay, you I got oh, oh, the A set. Okay, yeah. So if he knocks this hand down? Sure, or he's just good luck. To tie out your hands. I see. Yeah, so, so even if he, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm in very much in control, and that's important. So if I come here, he knocks that down. So knock it down. I'm still in good shape. I'm not really, I'm loose. That's the thing. I'm not like, Ugh, you know? So if I come here, he knocks it down. I'm still good, but I'm not, you know, he's a, he's a step up field, but he's really not in a position where he can edge me or anything like that. I'm inside out, so I don't know if that answers your question, but, but be loose with it. Don't, you're not coming out here like, ah, uh, you know, this is where I get beat, you know? So it's really loose. That one more time. So I'm here, touch, okay? So even if he knocks it down, he's still disrupted. He's, he still has not advanced himself. So we're, we're, we're back to, I would rather start him there, you know, than start him back a few yards deep. So. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'd take them, but Coach? Sure, just real quick, uh, tilt nose on the center, real tight tilt nose, quick swim on the snap hand side. Okay. You got to get depth for that. Okay. <laughs> depth is important. I mean, I think your offhand is big. I said depth, you know, because you're worried about getting that snap hand caught or, or, or just, you know, getting, uh, he's, he's swimming the snap hand. Well, you do it, yeah, line, up, line up with nose. Yeah. So your snap hand, I'm right. So, so I'm here, and he's at tilt. So I'm sitting here, and you're gonna snap, you're gonna swim like that, right, coach? Okay. So, so there you go. I've gotten up. My, my feet are helping me with that, and I might just tip him, dump him there with that uh, that high arm, too. You know, if he's if he's gonna swim that high. But I know what you're saying they're kind of doing. They're not all doing that high stuff, but yeah, I just want to get depth. That stuff saves me at center. But uh, good. How much time we got, Bob? We're done. Okay. Oh. The thing I wanted to mention too, fellas, is take a look at your backside guard versus a three technique on the backside zone block with the tackle and the guard. You know, the guard tackle is zoning a three and the linebacker the play is going the other way. Take a look and see if that backside guard is getting the shit knocked out of him by the three technique. It's probably because he's not using his hands and he's not losing some ground to his feet or ankle. Hey, yeah, thank you.